We tend to think of space as a means to an end, as a natural resource that allows us to improve life and knowledge here on Earth. We launch GPS satellites because we want to navigate across town, broadband satellites because we need to be connected, Earth observation satellites that monitor crops because we aim to improve agriculture. Now, since the launch of the first satellite, Back in 1957, with Sputnik 1, humans have launched over 11,000 satellites into orbit, out of which approximately two-thirds are still in orbit, but really only about 34% out of the 11,000 are still active and operational. Now, how about the other satellites that are still in orbit, but not operating anymore? Now, satellites, just like any infrastructure, go through a life cycle process. They are designed, built, used, and eventually they become obsolete and they die. However, satellites are rather expensive to build and to launch in general, and therefore, and because the, sat the services that satellites provide to us here on Earth are so valuable. Over the past few years, people have started realizing that if we actually start taking care of these space infrastructures, these satellites, we can make them last longer in space. And we can provide better value for those who use it. So in a way, we could serve satellites in order to allow them to serve us better. And this is leading to sort of a, a shift in perspective in that instead of asking what can satellites do for us here on Earth, engineers ask themselves what can satellites do for other satellites? And with this new mindset, similar to what we have here on the ground, collaboration between satellites in orbit will simply enable co-working in space. Now, I believe that bringing the co-working movement to space will be the key not only to reduce overcrowding in orbit, but also to maximize the available resources, making space more sustainable and efficient than it is nowadays. So let me give you some examples of some very ingenious solutions that are currently being developed to cater to this, op to this orbital shared office and to foster symbiosis in, an, in the space ecosystem. We will look at four different technology streams, namely concerning disposal, maintenance, safety, and IT-based initiatives. The first one is disposal. Now, as far as cleaning the space environment goes, there has been a push in recent years to develop and test technology to remove non-functioning satellites and other big chunks of equipment from space, like rocket stages. And these initiatives typically include a chaser satellite coming up closer to a dead satellite, grabbing it and bringing it down to lower orbit so that it burns up in the atmosphere. And you see here an example of a, an European Space Agency demonstration mission called ED Orbit. And ED Orbit uses a net to capture old satellites. But there also exist other concepts that employ, for instance, harpoons or that allows simple propelling of an old satellite to enable it to come down on its own. The second solution involves repairing satellites in orbit in order to extend their lives. Longer lifetimes enable an operator to generate more revenue from a satellite after it has been fully depreciated. But it also allows operators 
to delay the continuous replacing, replacement of aging satellites and therefore avoid having to launch so often and have these such huge costs from having to replace, replenishing satellites um, so frequently. Now, maintenance can be in the form of simply correcting a fault in a spacecraft, for instance, correct, uh, fixing a leak. Um, or it can be, for instance, the complete swapping out of degraded parts. It can also be through upgrading and building on top of existing infrastructures with technologies such as manufacturing in orbit or 3D printing. And we can think of building materials in orbit a bit as if it's playing, playing space Lego. Now, the third solution stream brings in the needed protection in orbit through the monitoring of the space environment from space. We have an estimated 130 million pieces of debris objects flying out there of the various shapes. Starting from objects of the size of a grain of sand all the way to objects that are larger than a bus. But unfortunately, we currently only see less than 0.1% of all these objects. So we really only see from the ground the bigger pieces. So by observing debris from up close, from space, we can improve the information about the dangers lurking in our orbit environment. On the one hand, by seeing objects that were previously not trackable from the ground, but on the other hand, by boosting the accuracy with which we can track these objects. And this is important because satellites being able to tell other satellites very precisely that there is an object crossing their path and the collision is due tomorrow at a, this or that position really improves safety in orbit. It allows operators to prepare well for possible collisions and enables a better operational ecosystem. Now, how about IT for in-space co-working? Each day, several petabytes of data are generated in orbit. Now, a petabyte is a pretty big number. It has about 16 digits. And currently, satellites simply send the data they collect in their missions directly to Earth. But this has some broad drawbacks. For instance, satellites have to wait several hours in order to pass over their ground station. And if it so happens that there is bad weather around this ground station, then the data cannot be transmitted to the ground at all. A solution that allows for the processing and downlinking of the information in near real time is, for instance, building a network of space data centers for cloud compu computing that allows the shortening of communications and processing delays. Now, think of satellites who monitor tsunami events or even wildfires. They need to get a clear picture of exactly what is going on when the crisis arises. And having a space-based network could allow and could enable the coordination and the planning of, of national security and disaster responses. So you see that there is now a whole new space economy being built around existing satellite infrastructures. The initiatives that we've seen here have varying degrees of progress. But what experts can agree is that, firstly, there needs to be an improvement on the technology front, for instance, in terms of systems autonomy and robotics, in order to fully unlock the potential of these concepts. Secondly, we need to have in place the right regulations that enable the continued safe use of the space environment and the space-based assets, but also, at simultaneously, allow new business ideas to arise and thrive in this environment. And finally, we need to develop an understanding of 
what solutions will ultimately be feasible in the long term. Due to the nascent, nascent stage of market development, the demand for these services is not yet well defined. And over the next years, we will be able to pinpoint exactly which solutions, which smart solutions, have the potential to scale up and become affordable to customers. What I think is important is that we take advantage of the fact that this co-working space is close to home and we have the chance to get it right in the short and midterm futures before actually starting building new shared spaces further away. Thank you. <laughs>